It's okay? Yes. So thank, thank you very much for, for joining me once again. Um, I, as I had explained earlier, um, the press briefings would be sparse because all of our energies are focused on the activities taking place at the conf uh, convention center. And uh, at that center, there are hundreds of people apart from the GCOM staff and the representatives of other political parties, but hundreds of people from the People's Progressive Party who are working every single day beyond the call of duty, most of them voluntarily, um, to do a number of critical tasks that is essential to the recon being completed and not being tampered with. So these are people who are watching the containers, people who are standing guard around the convention center, people who are daily on a daily basis responsible for the logistics, getting the boxes out of the containers, seeing they're not tampered with, taken to the counting stations and then have them safely return. And there are, of course, the counting agents themselves who are being, who have to spend maybe 10 hours a day because they, most of them are not rotated um, in a very painstaking and very difficult and, and sometimes frustrating environment where APNU puts up every hurdle that they can imagine to a speedy count and to ensuring that the count is done properly. And then there are many, many others who supply stuff to people, etc. So the reason I started today by telling you all of this is because I want to thank those people like I did before, once again, because they're standing up for our country and also the other parties who are there and who have been in the media. Um, the independent media in Guyana, outside of those controlled by the state, um, which is the Chronicle and, and um, NCN and, and the DPI, the independent media has been taking the fight um, against what I call unbelievably uh, senseless arguments that are being made by APNU. And we, they've been making these statements that have no credibility whatsoever and with a straight face. And they continue to repeat their lies, the falsehoods, even long after they have been exposed, even after they have been exposed, they keep repeating them with a straight face. And so it is bizarre, entirely surreal, that people would go there who are former ministers, and it seems as though they have completely lost their nuts, nuts and they just keep saying these things when the entire media core and the country know that they are lying or just talking plain nonsense. But this pantomime, this, this, this drama that we are going through in seems to be coming to an end soon. Um, and it's coming to an end in a way that is making APNU even more desperate. So you've noticed the absolute silence from APNU about Mingo's massive fraud in Region 4. Absolute silence. Their dismissal of this issue as though it never happened. Although, if you read all the reports, 
that is what led to us not having re results of the March 2nd elections over 90 days after those elections have been concluded. So you would believe that Mingo fraud never took place. And that was a major heist, major theft. And every single day, we have been exposing this fraud. So, so we have given a number of examples, like we had 87 examples on the East Bank where Mingo inflated in either through inflating the APNU numbers or um, reducing PPP numbers gave um, APNU AFC over 5,000 votes that they got, never got validly cast to them. If there was any ghost um, casting votes, and uh, it was those ghost votes that they got from Mingo. And then yesterday we started the East Coast. And again, we saw the major inflation of the number of votes that APNU got on the East Coast. We released some 20 stations just yesterday. And this morning, I, even early this morning, before midday, we had another seven boxes that had been inflated on the East Coast in favor of APNU. But you would notice that they pay absolutely no attention to this. When the media asks them about Mingo, they sweep it under the carpet or become very intolerant to the mention of Mingo's name. But Mingo was the only fraud. Mingo's was the only fraud perpetrated in these elections. And so we will continue right down to the last box, which will be counted. Hopefully, this will be concluded by Sunday, and we will continue to expose Mingo's fraud. Um, the international community, as I said before, has already spoken out about this fraud. And so if they think that they will just sweep it under the carpet, um, it's not going to happen. Uh, so you've heard a lot from APNU since they knew the recount was going to take place. So this, people ask me, why is it that you are so soft on Granger? Um, because they believe he is behind all of this, the attempt to steal the elections. And one of the reasons, I could be wrong on this, but one of the reasons that I've given him the benefit of the doubt for is that when we met with CARICOM, and I said we should have the recount in Region 4 with the five CARICOM heads, he said they had some concerns in a couple of other regions. And I then said, we do not have a problem of counting, recounting the ballots in all the regions. If he has a problem, and that will satisfy his concern, so that we can have a recount, total recount. And he, obviously, the people at the meeting were not very happy, Harmon and Trotman. I could see their faces because I believe they knew that once a recount was completed or done, that the real figures will be revealed. And they knew that Mingo had inflated the votes for them. And that is why they have never, ever released their SOPs um, to the public. So because they knew their own SOPs would have really uh, revealed the extent of the fraud. So they were very unhappy about this. And they were the ones who contributed, even to the last moment when we had to sign the Memorandum of Understanding, the memoir rather, um, between myself and Granger, could not get, get it signed because 
some of them were trying to block it. And that, and Chicom, Vincent Alexander Chicom, was insisting that they get the, they had that before they they agreed to the recount. Uh, Chicom, and so, so um, because I believe he also knew about what the figures would reveal. So when that failed and and the aid memoir was signed, they then. The same Royce Dale Ford, who is in neck deep in this conspiracy, and others went to the court to block the recount. And of course, they failed. Um, and therefore, the recount went ahead. So that is why I believe Granger, by agreeing to this recount, they were not very happy with the recount. And they're not very happy also with a statement that he is awaiting the recount to be completed and he will accept. The word any declaration has double meaning, but he will accept the declaration from the chair of the commission that he has confidence in her. So no doubt that is, they had to shift at that point in time once the recount was agreed to and started, they knew the fraud would have been revealed as it was. And therefore, they had to start shifting the narrative. And that is why in the last three or four weeks, we have been treated to this comedy show, this circus that would make people who seem intelligent, the majority of the country, changing their views on them. And they have rolled out some of the faithful to spin this yarn, to spin this tale about this new narrative about the fraud in the elections, an election that they were claiming. They all claim was free and fair and they won. Suddenly, they're discovering fraud. But let me tell you, if anything, if anything, that this recount has discovered how robust our system is, how robust and how fraud-proof it is, because a lot of the, the widespread allegations by APNU, wild, wild, wild allegations by APNU, and I'll come to those in a moment, they have been proven wrong and false on so many occasions. And so it showed how robust polling day procedures were. And that is why all the international organizations, every single observer group, and President Granger himself, he said, as, uh, uh, they all said that polling day procedures were perfect, the staff was well trained, they were doing well. And he himself said he'd spent three hours walking, visiting stations, and they it was very efficiently done. So let's go through what the findings were after they put us through this entire recount process. And um, we spent probably hundreds of millions of dollars and put the entire country on hold. So what were the findings? So in Region 1, um, the GCOM declared figures, which had been completed, Region 1, and certified. The GCOM declared figure for APNU was 3,905. The recount figure was 3,909. They gained four votes there. Um, PPP, the GCOM declared, was 8,022. Um, we, the recount showed 8,002, we lost 20 votes. So that was region one, almost mirror the statement of the, the declaration, the original declaration. So these variances are largely because they went into the reject ballots and had an, a second look at them 
to see if when the counting was done that there was an error in the counting. And so you have minor variances here. Region 2, it's practically the same thing. I'm not going to call the figures, but APNU lost three votes there. PPP lost three votes. That's comparing the March 2nd declared figure with the recount figure. Both parties lost three votes in, the, in Region 2. In Region um, 3, APNU lost three votes. PPP lost four votes. In Region 5, um, APNU gained five votes. PPP gained nine votes. In Region 6, APNU gained 61, PPP 165, because they had made some errors in transporting what was on the tally sheet to the SOP. So in Region 7, APNU lost 4, PPP gained 8. In Region 8, APNU gained 66, PPP 11. In Region 9, APNU lost 2, PPP gained 2. And Region 10, APNU lost 16, and PPP lost 2. So when you look at nine regions, notice I didn't call region 4. All nine regions, the recount completed. And you compare with the addition that was done on election day based on the declared statement at that time for each region, APNU gained 108 votes and we gain 166 for the nine regions. So the difference, when you look at those regions, we were 51,437 votes ahead of APNU after you look at these nine regions. Now, most of these regions, seven of these regions have been certified already, and for region six and 10, they are pending certification, but they have been fully tabulated. So I'm using the fully tabulated numbers. So you see that in all nine regions now that have been completed, there isn't much of a difference. Uh, it confirms what took place on the polling day, that the PPP was over 51,000 votes ahead of APNU in those regions, in the nine regions. So on, we come now to Region 4. So Region 4 is divided into East Bank, South Georgetown, North Georgetown, and East Coast. So on our uploaded, APNU never uploaded the statements of poll. So the PBP, since March, uploaded its statement of poll, statements of poll and it is still there, all of them. And then we gave a figure when we added those statements of poll, which is on that site. If you go there, region 4 sopscom you will see it, and you will see when it was uploaded. You can check the timestamp. It was uploaded since March. So for the uploaded SOPs, APNU for East Bank had 21,624. PPP Civic, 22,355. These are based on our SOPs that we uploaded. As I said before, neither GCOM released their SOPs nor APNU. In the statement of recount, on the APNU got 21,614, so they lost 10 votes for the whole East Bank, and PBP got 22,391. It gained 36 votes. So on the East Bank, there was very, very little difference. But what the key point here is that you re recall earlier they were saying we put up fake SOPs, well, the SOPs that we put on our website for East Bank match those of the recount that was done in the presence of everyone. So it is, the, the PPP had 
the real SOP is given to it by GCOM, and it was credible. What was not credible was Mingo's declaration that gave them nearly 8,000 votes more than this figure for, for East Bank. And we exposed that a bit early, some of that. For South Georgetown, we have on the website APNU 39,780, PPP 6,371. So in the recount figure, APNU in South Georgetown got 39,743. They lost, they lost 37 votes. And PPP 6,371. It was the exact same figure. Imagine after this whole recount of 200 and something boxes in South Georgetown. There was no difference between the figure that we put on our website in March and the recount figure, observed by all the parties, APNU there, etc., in the recount. So it was exactly the same for the PVP, but APNU for South Georgetown. APNU lost 37 votes. Then North Georgetown, we had, we, in our March SOPs that we got from GCOM that we uploaded, had APNU at 22,000. 494 votes, PPP at 10,996. When the statement of recount was done, um, APNU, APNU now has 22,474, they lost 20 votes, and PPP 11,014, 18, 18 we gain. So for, the, for this North Georgetown, there are two boxes that have not been tabulated as yet, but we added them. Um, these are boxes um, 45, 41, and 45, 44, but we add them in to the tabulated figures. So you see for North Georgetown. Now on the east coast of Demerara, we have... APNU in our statements of poll, APNU gaining 33,052 votes and PBP 41,165. And that is the scores is now being completed. So if the pattern we show that almost in exact cases, in all the cases, the SOPs are, the recount figures are matching the SOPs. So we expect the East Coast to hold the same pattern. In fact, it will already, it's being confirmed. So we will gain about 8,000 votes, just over 8,000 votes ahead of APNU in the East Coast, when all of East Coast has been tabulated. And that added to the 7,000 odd votes that we are ahead already on, that will bring the, the recount to a conclusion with PPP just over 15,000 votes. So this is precisely what is happening. A lot of people are a little concerned. They call me and said, oh, the lead has gone from 18,000 to 13 to 7,000 7, some, 7,382 now. And I say to them, East Coast, we won East Coast by about eight, over 8,000 votes. And therefore, that will be added back. But it's the timing of when it's tabulated that matters. And they know it too. That is why they're acting up now, saying that the election should be voided. So because they know what will come in. And in any case, the historical patterns for the East Coast are quite clear. In 2011, we won it by 9,548 votes. 2015, we won it by 5,758 votes. Then in the local government elections in 2016, we won by 11,006 votes. 2018, by 15,000 vo votes. That is local government. And then in the general elections, these elections, we, we won East Coast by 8,133 votes. So you will hear them also. They used to peddle a lie that the PPP said it won Region 4. But when you add all of these, East Bank, East Coast, North Georgetown, and South Georgetown, which are major strongholds, the APNU will get 116,000 votes, 116,950, and PBP 80,800. 
So when you, when you look at it overall, remember our lead was already 51,000 votes. We will be over 15,000 ahead. So this is what it, it's, it's it, it heading to. As we said before, a People's Progressive Party victory. Um, it's quite clear here what, what is taking place. And that is why in that context, you must understand the panic that we see from Harmon. Harmon has now become, as I said be before, he's almost going mad. I see him all around the place making statements that no sane person will make. So he's come up with this fiction now. They've come up with a fiction that dead people, up to today he repeated that the main contentions are dead people voting and that hundreds of persons not in Ghana on March 2nd voted. So let's deal with the dead people that they said voted. Until now, they have not produced a shred of evidence. They produced one birth certificate, and that person never voted on election day. Never voted. The name was not even ticked on the list much less voted. So not a single shred of evidence that was produced. On the other hand, Harmon submitted, he said 19 letters he wrote the chair of GCOM. Well, it's 19 useless letters, all designed to trap the chair into responding to him, his his purest claims, these fake claims, these ridiculous claims, so that if she responds them, she gives them some to them. The, she re, she gives them some legitimacy, and with the hope that maybe later they can file a court case based on that response. But let's take. So he could write a hundred letters, a hundred letters, but if they're all letters that are nonsensical. If you read those letters, you will see how silly some of them are. And they have been already disproved hundreds of times before. But he still, they still persist in writing these letters. As though the number of letters that they write to the commission will strengthen their case, not the strength of their argument, which is extremely weak. So he's, they're, they're palavering all day long, Cathy Hughes and everyone, oh, we wrote 19 letters. It's 19 letters with the content useless and spurious, false. So Harman makes this outrageous claim that some 90,000 people voted who shouldn't have voted, irregularities. Everybody knows that this is impossible. In, it, totally impossible. I don't think any person in Guyana, even a news supporter, could ever comprehend how could 90,000 people vote who supposed not supposed to vote, and then you were claiming victory a couple of days ago. When did you discover these 90,000 people voting? And you had GCOM staff dealing with it. They had picture ID on every folio that every polling agent had. You've seen the video showing how robust it was and Glowenfield explaining how robust it will be at the polling station to imp and, and how, what safeguards they had against impersonation. And, and then the polling agents for each party, the EU report said that the polling agents for both political parties, major political parties, were well-trained. They had lists with, with people's pictures on them. So with this 90,000 is a figment of their imagination. But he hopes somehow this will, I don't know who would believe this, but that it may find some fertile ground in, in the hardcore. So, so, um, so that's the first claim about dead people. The second one is that pursuant to this, this letters, 
he sent two lists to the chair of GCOM. Now, a list with 207 names and another list of 310 names. So that gives you 517 names he sent over to the chair of GCOM claiming these people were out of Guyana and therefore could not vote on election day. Now, the chair unfortunately sent that letter, but maybe now whilst, whilst making it clear that GCOM has absolutely no jurisdiction to investigate any of these wild claims. But maybe the release of this was a blessing in disguise, and I'll tell you why in a moment. So the chair sent this letter, um, the 207 names, to the commissioner of police, the first list. And we have seen the response now from the commissioner of police, where he claimed that of the 207 persons, 35 were found here in Guyana, were in Guyana. So first of all, Harmon's list was inflated by the 210 by 35. Then the commissioner of police confirmed that 172 of the 210 were out of Guyana. And in four days, we have managed to find 32 of those persons, 32 persons that are on the list of 172. So this is the commissioner's verified list. Now given that the commissioner is a statutory office and GCOM information supply would be official, in the face of this expose and the face of the, the, the people coming forward, the commissioner must now consider withdrawing that letter as being a letter, the, the, the letter that he sent to Claudette Singh with, because the information that he supplied was incorrect and, and vastly so. Because in just a small sample, in a few days, we managed to find 32 of 172 that he claimed his records um, show that they are out of the jurisdiction. So he must now withdraw that list because the, the list is flawed, has false information. But as the media pointed out, in any case, if you find out that these people are out of Guyana, they were actually out of Guyana, there is no way to know whether they voted on election day because GCOM can't verify that and they have not verified that. And worse yet now, we have one man who wrote Justice Singh and Adler Bino, and he says, I reject any contention and may have supported electoral fraud. I'm therefore seeking confirmation from GCOM as to whether or not someone did vote on my behalf without my permission to do so. Now, this person who was out genuinely, he says he wants GCOM to investigate. Now, if anybody voted for him, how would GCOM investigate that? And there might be thousands of others who will write Claudette Singh. This will take another 10 years, five years, before the next elections to do all of this. If you have 100,000 people writing to say, I want to know who impersonated me. It is, it just muddy the water even further. So the commissioner should consider withdrawing this list and submitting if he does submit a proper list, a verified list. But the submission of the, even the submission of the list 
to the Justice Singh doesn't mean anything. The GCOM is not a court of law. The Ghana Elections Commission cannot annul the elections. They cannot annul the elections. They cannot invalidate or valid, invalidate a single vote. That has to be done in the court in an elections petition. That's where all matters relating to letters and whether people voted or not could be made in an elections petition after the declaration is made. And that is international practice and it is consistent with our constitution. So they know they're on weak grounds. They know once the recount is done because this is a recount of the vote that Harmon spin about, oh, the votes are only valid when they validate every person. So we can't count the votes anymore and treat those as valid votes. We got to go and find the 200 and the 460 something thousand people who voted and ask them, did you vote or did someone vote for you? That, that is what, how ridiculous it has gone, gone to from his statement just this morning in, in front of the con convention center. It has gone to the ridiculous now. So of the next list, so that's of the 172. Now to show you how ridiculous Harmon's and how, how false these allegations are. They, let's look at the second list. So I was dealing with a 210 list that went to the commissioner and he verified 172 and rejected 35 names. So that immediately, we found 32 of those. For the next list now, which is of 300 and 310 persons that Harman supplied, we found 178 of the 310. So when you add the 178 plus the 32 that we have, we have um, found so far, we have found 210 of the 482. 210 of the 482 because if you have 517 and you take out the 35 that the commissioner found, that leaves you to 482. And we found 210 or 43.5% of the people, and this we're still finding, because this is only a couple of days ago we got the list, and we have found already nearly half of those that Harman said who were out, that were out of the country and couldn't have voted. We're finding them in Guyana. So it just shows how much of a fishing expedition they're on, and therefore we have to reject this. This is a party desperate. People like Harman are extremely desperate. So let's go on. So this too needs to be rejected. Totally rejected. Imagine you send over a list claiming people are out and we've already found nearly half of them in three days or four days. We're, and we're still, people are still calling in. So it's false. A lot of their objections. So then um, they even went on. Imagine... That's, that's one set of objections. So the ones that Harman went there with, sent to the commissioner. Then at the stations themselves, this is what takes place. If you have a chance to listen to the audio feed, an app new person will call out the serial numbers. Sometimes a hundred serial numbers they would call out. And then the GCOM staff will say, oh, they it's not tick, it's not tick, it's not tick. And then three of a hundred, five of 70 and stuff are ticked there. And then they would claim that the people are, the five are then out of the jurisdiction or dead without providing any, any evidence. So let's use one case as an example. On the 3rd of June, APNU issued a press release and said, that it never objected to Devendra Kisun, who is a prominent attorney at law here in Guyana. It never objected 
So the Ventra Kesunas having voted um, as a being in the ju jurisdiction. So, and that it's PPP propaganda, and PPP must provide the evidence. So, we now have the audio, and that was widely played, everybody knows this, that on, in box 4497, the APNU agent objected to number 157. Number 157 is the Vendra Kisun. And in the observation report, it says that they objected as being out of the jurisdiction, therefore couldn't have voted. So clearly, at the counting station, they have a number of objections that are made there, fakely uh, or falsely. And then Harmon makes another set. He supplies a list of three fifth, uh, five something that is all, uh, also fake. This is what is going on. And they issue even a press release, took their time to, to issue a press release on the 3rd of June. And then everybody sees it. They have the, the observation report that they signed on to, made public. The audio was made public that they objected to the Avenger Kisun and they're denying it. So this is what is happening. These objections to people being out of the country, hundreds of them, etc. So the first one, 90,000 more people voted. They supplied 500 names that should have voted. Now they supplied 500 odd names to the chair of GCOM. We found nearly half of them in a few days already. They, they're even denying that they objected to some people. They have not produced a shred of evidence to show that, they, um, that people, dead people voted, yet they're making this claim. So what are some of the other claims they're making and they continue to make? So that, oh, the discipline services vote 8,000 discipline services, their ballots were not stamped and therefore not counted, and that the discipline services vote for them. Now, the, we, I think this issue has been ventilated heavily, but guess what happened? In the face of all the, the exposure by GCOM, the expose, the evidence to the contrary, they continue up to yesterday, Harmon said, that the discipline ballots were not counted. And the PRO of GCOM said herself that they, at that point last week when they made the claim that only just over 1,500 votes were rejected at that time in the recount. And they had already claimed 8,000 discipline services ballots were not counted. And only of the, 15, the 1,500 rejected, very few were done for on stamp because they were on stamp. And the two biggest ones, we had small numbers, the two biggest ones were in Sophia, where they lost 60 something votes, and in Sophia, and then Plindora um, Nursery in Ogle, where we lost 97 votes because of the same issue of on stamp ballots. But that was how it was on election night, and we had to live with it. APNU has, if anybody, if you sum it up, PPP probably lost more votes because of unstamped ballots than APNU did. And they're not disciplined services ballot because there is no way of tracing the ballot to a voter. So again, that lie was exposed, but Harman keeps repeating it. No doubt he wants to, to fool the people from the, dis the soldiers and our policemen and others. So that's another lie they speak about. Then they rolled out Stanley Ming and a few others to say the list was bloated. Now you recall that the Chief Justice ruled on this matter. The Constitution of Ghana says that you don't lose your vote even if you migrate. We know that, but the question is even if you're on the list, can you vote on polling day 
because of these robust measures? And Chicom answered that itself by saying no. So imagine they're trying to show the list is bloated, but on the list that we went to the, ele the, the um, March 2nd elections with, you had 660,998 names. Of those 464,630, that includes the rejected ballot, voted. So about 200,000 people who are on the list didn't vote because one assumed they're dead or migrated. Now, if you had 660,000 or 661,000 vote, that's a different issue. But, but we're not getting into that because I, the last thing I want to do, and that's what they want to suck us into, is to get, run behind every one of these spurious arguments because then we lose sight of the big fraud, which is the Mingo's fraud and the PPP victory. So guess what Mingo said? In Mingo's figures, you have 479,453 who voted. So a good 15,000 more. So if anyone bloated the number of people's, people who voted, it was Mingo. Because when you look at his declared figure, his declared figure exceeds the real figure by over 15,000. So if they want to talk about bloating, the only bloating that we had was Mingo's bloat. He increased the number of voters by 15,000, over 15,000, and gave all of this to APNU. Gave all of it to, to APNU. So that, that in itself, um, could, we could deal with. And then this, yesterday, we noticed a new phenomenon now. No doubt elements within GCOM, and Roxanne Myers is at the center of this. So yesterday morning, we showed up, and all along, throughout the entire recount, there was a particular language, the language of the observation report was cleared by the commission, where they have to record what takes place in each of these reports without drawing judgment. The supervisors or the recon staff, the junior staff, cannot make a judgment call. So yesterday morning, they started putting in for some East Coast boxes where they don't have some of the documents that they could not validate the recount because of these missing documents. So that's a new, that's directly language coming from Congress place, which was no doubt given to Roxanne Myers or somebody in the Secretariat, and they instructed the counting staff to put that. So counting staff, only courts can validate people's vote, not the counting staff or anyone else, only the court of law. And so they started inserting that now in the, in the observation report. And now yesterday, APNU started saying, oh, look, their votes, can, their count can be validated, etc." So we have raised that this afternoon. A team went to meet Lowenfield because we know where these documents are. They're not in the box, but many of the DROs from the East Coast who fell under Mingo again, remember Mingo was in charge of Region 4, they collected a lot of these documents, gave it to Mingo and Mr. Lowenfield. And so Lowenfield has confirmed that he has these documents. I'm told by Mr. Nandalal and others who went as part of the team this morning that Lowenfield has confirmed that he has these documents that were not placed in the box because they were taken by the DROs, uh, or no doubt by me, under Mingo's instruction, and then handed it. The key thing here is that the votes in the boxes, when recounted, match the SOPs. So that is, that is important for us. But now they've started just this morning. So this is an ongoing fight to the last day. To the last day it will be. Because no doubt APNU is clutching at a straw so they want the word invalidate. Imagine the arrogance of, of um, one of their chief riggers, V. 
Vincent Alexander. He as a commissioner, well, he can know how to validate and what not to validate. He can't validate anybody's vote. Only the courts can do that. So no doubt they, they triggered their moles in there. There would be rigors to start inserting this here. So we, we're going to deal with that at the appropriate time. We have dealt with it already. We made representation because these documents were with the DRO, Mingo, and Lowenfield. That are there that couldn't be found, like some of the documents couldn't be found in the boxes for some of the East Coast areas, but Mingo was heavily involved. But what was key is that the ballots were there. When they counted the ballot, uh, um, ballots, they match exactly with the statements of poll. And the, the statements of poll, as you recall, were signed by APNU, the presiding officers, the the um, party reps and up including up news reps so we we have those two um, so these are lots of you're gonna have a lot of these claims wild claims by people like Harmon and the others but we cannot we cannot um, be sucked into their narrative that's what we are trying to avoid that's why we don't respond to every single nonsense or every single false claim. They want to suck us into that type of argument so that we lose sight of the real picture. And the real picture is that the PBP won these elections. The Mingo's declaration was the only fraud. When the recount is done, the numbers would show that we, we, the PBP has won that the declaration has to be made. It says in the order, the declaration of the credible count, the count. So that's it. The credible, the one that was not credible was Mingo's count. The recount is a credible one because it's observed by everyone. The, anybody who has issues, you have an issue of dead people voted or migrated, gather up your documents and go to the court and file an election petition we filed an election petition in 2015 too. And remember, the margin was just over 4,000 votes when they, they won. We're going to win uh, with over 15,000 votes more than APNU. And so that has to be done. Um, GCOM has no role in these investigations, so-called investigations. This will take about four or five years to investigate everything else so that Harmon can continue to squat and, and use resources and continue with the corruption that he's so accustomed to. Um, so the Harmon speaks about, uh, I just have to say that PBP is filibustering, not giving them answers. The PBP commissioners, he led an assault on the PBP commissioners. It's an absolute lie. He wants a statement from the commission to say they must r go on a wild goose chase running down some um, fantasy pathway to investigate the people that we are finding already that is his false claims. That is what he wants. And so he is very upset that the chair or the commission has not acceded to his demand. So he has threatened them. Now, this is important for us. We wrote the commissioner of police yesterday. This, the, Harmon is a thug. And he, if, I don't know if he's acting on Granger's instructions here, but Mr. Granger, President Granger, has said he wants to see the recount completed. He wants a, the, the chair must make the declaration. Harmon yesterday said that, um, they cannot be allowed to sail to the end, the recount, without him getting answers. So he wants the demand of a constitutional body. They must meet at his beck and call. Harmon, the, the, uh, a junior operative in the government now because he's no longer minister from what I see. But the commission must drop all they're doing and meet because Harmon has given them the deadline of t this evening to meet. This is the language of a thug. 
as someone who's threatening the recount. And I hope that the CARICOM officials are looking at this because the international community has been briefed. And I hope that President Granger himself is seeing that what he promised, that the recount will be supported and stuff, Harmon is threatening the recount now, even at this late stage. I gather he and Roysdale Ford been trying to convince the president about this fraud. But if he listens to them, these two guys have the most to lose because of widespread, widespread fraud. And I will say that without, um, without any fear of being contradicted in ma many areas. They're desperate, the two of them. And so I hope that he doesn't buy into this narrative about the oh they're finding all these people etc because he could have ended this before and that's where he is to be blamed he could have asked for their sops he could have listened to the international community he could have said why is it that the all the parties and the whole world is saying that these mingo's declarations are fraud which they've proven to be and why am i hearing from Harmon and a few others alone that it is, um, I won the elections, and I should be sworn in. Should do the same sort, if they lie to him then, he must, sh should, should be, unless he's part of the plot. But I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, because if he, he's not part of the plot. He should not trust them, because they lied to him before, and now they're trying to protect their own interests. So Harmon then even wants to give the DPP um, directions, and he threatens Commissioner Ben. You know, the, he wants them to lock up Ropes and Ben because Ropes and Ben has been a vocal voice against the acts of corruption there. And then we hear about all of this language, you know, this cannot urging people to mobilize, etc. The same Harmon again. Well, we've, we are aware of, of meetings with criminal gangs by some individuals, and we're watching it carefully, and we have briefed the international community. We've asked to see the commissioner of police on next week, and there has to be a strong view, and I hope that the police will, um, will act with the same alacrity and the same purposefulness and the same, in the same resolute manner that they did when 15 of our people went out and they were trying to protest in front of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to allow the international observers to return. They had on masks, they were over six feet apart, and the police arrested one of our leaders, in fact, two persons. So I hope that they would apply the same sort of resoluteness in addressing any of these illegal gatherings. Um, they, I notice people are concerned that they are trying to lift the curfew from the 17th. People say, oh, that is to facilitate violence. They're not going to threaten us into, this is the APNU language going back. Oh, you'll have trouble if you don't declare for us. We must all give up on democracy because we are afraid that Harmon would stir up trouble. Well, we have dealt with that before. We have dealt with Harmon and, 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 and all of the others before and these threats. So they, are, they talk about power sharing, but the entire language is one of confrontation and even digging a deeper hole. These people have no interest except for a fraudulent result to be announced. They have no interest of sitting down and looking to the future. Imagine people who are talking about power sharing, etc., still accuses us of rigging the election, 90,000 votes, and are saying and trying to work people up falsely into a frenzy, including in their support base. Misleading people, they've misled them already about six or seven times when they told them they won the elections. And now they're misleading them every single day. They have these programs to, to do that. So we have, to, we have to be extremely cautious about that. Um, they, as I said before, we must not be, the PVP supporters must not be baited. These guys are trying to bait people. I know Eric Phillips saying, P 
PPP is organizing a protest. Uh, we are not organizing any protest. This is a falsehood. But he mentions this in the newspapers, uh, and then he criticizes it as though it's a fact that we are, we are organizing this protest. But he wanted some way to bring in the race message again. They can't get past the race baiting. That is all they're doing. And using that, he and David Hines and the others, as a, the underpinning, the underpinning philosophy for power sharing. These guys didn't talk about power sharing when they're in office, that's one. And two, how did they treat afro Guyanese? They're so concerned about afro Guyanese interests. Now, well, how were afro Guyanese treated in the, in the last five years? Many of them lost what they had built up under the PPP. And, and to still, and we prepared to participate in any debate to show that all of Ghana, including afro Guyanese, made more progress than PPP governments than, than they did on the, any time the PNC or APNU has been in office. We're prepared to have that fact-based debate, which these, the David Hines and Lincoln Lewis and the Eric Phillips would run from. They don't want a fact-based debate. That will come later. But now they're so concerned about afro Guyanese interests. They're not. They're concerned about their own pockets because they're, many of them have been enjoying the privilege, the privileges of the APNU cabal, including Vincent Alexander and, and, the, and the others. So I, um, I just wanted, so if they're really wanted to engage, they could have easily said, let's work together, get the results announced, don't threaten anybody, and then let the, let's talk about the future. And that is, we have in our manifesto this issue. But, but this bunch here cannot, um, they, how, do, how do you work with people who are so criminally or oriented, they just want to hang on in a criminal fashion? To, to, um, to power, even when they have lost the elections. So I'm very pleased that um, <coughs> the, the congressmen, a bipartisan group of congressmen, have um, written to President Granger on June 4th. And one, one thing that is drawn to my attention is a part which it says, your leadership role during the recount process is critical to Guyana's continued respect for the rule of law. Your place in Guyana's history will be secured by ensuring an internationally recognized declaration of results consistent with the laws of Ghana. That was laying it out clearly. I was laying it out clearly. And then there is also a statement from the OAS, um, which practically says the, the same thing. It says that on the invitation of President David Grange and with the agreement of opposition leader Barra Jagdeo, the recount was also conducted in the presence of three high level and well respected scrutineers from the Caribbean community. OAS recalls that both President Granger and Dr. Jack Deo have agreed to accept the results of the recount as conducted by GCOM and scrutinized by CARICOM as final. So we agreed to that. Despite some inconsistencies in the electoral materials reviewed during the recount, as is normally the case in any electoral process, the OAS mission has no doubt, reason to doubt that the results emanating from the recount will be credible. So they're making it clear too. And then the EU came out with, with um, their final report and they said voting and counting were well managed all over the country, as was the tabulation of results in nine of Guyana's 10 regions. However, the integrity of the entire electoral process was seriously compromised by the non-transparent and non-credible tabulation of results in the largest and decisive region four by senior GCOM officials 
acting in blatant violation of the law and high court orders issued in this regard. This is from the European Union, confirming what we're saying. The European Union, a large number of countries. OAS, a large number of countries. The United States, very, very powerful. They've been, these are statements just out t yesterday and today. So people are watching. And so Harman and the others, if they think there will, uh, things will slip under the crack, they, they will not. Everyone is very, very vigilant here. And, and um, therefore, we have to proceed. We're, as I said before, we have been very cautious about, we have not been in the media a lot. We, we've just been focusing on the recount and ensuring that its integrity is maintained. Um, you know, we, we have criticized the chair of GCOM in the past, but I must say that she has owned the recount. She has been to the convention center every single day since the recount started. And that is critical to ensure that the rogue elements in the secretariat did not take over the recount. So she must be commended for that because we believe that had the commission not owned the recount, that some elements in the secretariat would have undermined it even by now. As we saw only yesterday, they're trying to insert new language into the observation report that had never been for all nearly 30 days before been in the report. But obviously, they're getting the, this language from Congress, please. So I want to urge people to, um, to be vigilant. We are a few days more away from the end of the recount. And then um, we hope and we expect that a, a declaration would be made in accordance with the Constitution of Guyana, in accordance with the order that was signed um, by, and gazetted by the chair of GCOM. Thank you.